Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up some character animations inside of Godot. So the pack we're going to be using for this example is Pixel Adventure. You can find that on itch.io. I'll link it in the description. If you'd prefer though, you can use your own character sprites instead. Okay, so from the pack I'm going to go into free main characters and then a virtual guy. And we'll bring in all of these character sprites into the program. I'll do that just using Windows drag and drop feature. So putting that into the res folder and the folder should be added to the project. Because we're dealing with 2D pixel, if we go to the import tab, you might see that they have filter checked. That's usually not something you want for pixel art. So what we can do rather than manually changing the settings here is to go to preset and then do 2D pixel and hit re-import, which should correct it to have the best settings for pixel art. So I'm gonna left click the following first sprite and then hold shift and then left click at the bottom of the list to select all of the other ones. Go to preset, 2D pixel, and re-import once again. Now if we go to all of these one by one, we should see that filter is no longer checked. If we hit F1 to go into 2D Godot mode and we drag these items onto the screen, we should see that the pixel art displays correctly with no anti-aliasing, which is what we want. We want those hard edges. Okay, so next we need to set up a scene for the character. So on the left box over here where it says create a root node, I'm gonna choose other node and I'm going to type in kinematic body 2D, which is an object that can be moved, but isn't interacted with by the physics engine directly. You have to manually control the movement with script. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create here. And then we're gonna wanna add in an animated sprite to the kinematic body so that we can actually see the character being rendered. So if I add in animated sprite here, the 2D version, not the 3D, we won't see anything initially. So we need to go over to the inspector on the right and where it says frames, we need to click on the drop down and choose new sprite frames. So now if you left click on the sprite frames object, you'll get the animation window to pop up and we're able to create and set animations. Uh, so for this sprite pack, the FPS for all the animations is 20. So I'm going to set that as 20 right now ahead of time. And next, let's start with the idle animation. So because this is a sprite sheet, as in a PNG that has all of the frames for the animation rather than including one frame per PNG file, we're gonna wanna hit this button to add frames from a sprite sheet. So click that, go into virtual guy. And now let's select the idle sprite sheet here and hit open. We're able to select the frames in the sprite sheet, but first we need to tell it how many rows and columns there are in the sprite sheet so that we can select them properly. So set vertical to one, uh, since there's only one row here, and then horizontal, just keep hitting right until the line separates them correctly. So in this case, that's 11. And now we can select these frames one at a time. And so now what we can do is left click on the first frame, hold shift and left click on the last frame and you'll get all 11 of these frames so hit add frames and if we imported everything correctly here we should be able to turn playing on and see the idle animation playing properly now we can rename this starting animation from default to idle by double clicking on it and we probably want to add in some extra animations so let's also add in the run animation so i'm going to hit plus on the new animation button and then rename this to run follow the same process you click on add frames from a sprite sheet click on run and let's go ahead and set horizontal to 11 and vertical to 1 and see if that gives us the right number of frames not quite looks like it's slightly off so maybe we need more like 12 here yeah that looks correct so left click on the first frame Hold shift, left click on the last frame, add 12 frames. And now if we change the speed to 20 FPS, it should look correct. And there we have a really sick run cycle animation. So now you're probably wondering how do we switch between the animations depending on what state the character is in. So I would say the quickest way to do that is just going to be to control it in your player movement script. So let's go to the kinematic body 2D, open up script in the inspector and click on script, go to new script and uh, well, let's call this player.godot or .gd because that'll make more sense. And we'll also rename the kinematic body 2D to player since that is the root node for our player object. So let's save that as a scene and let's go into the script. You can click here to go to script mode really quickly or you can hit F1 to go to 2D and F3 to go to script mode on your keyboard. So in order to control the animated sprite from script, we're going to need to get access to it in the script. So we can do that really quickly with a on ready var and say animated sprite here equals dollar sign animated sprite. So this is going to grab the animated sprite object from the children of this parent object. So 
basically grabbing this animated sprite really quickly in the script and on ready we set that to this variable which means we'll have access to it anywhere in the script having this up here is basically the equivalent of having this inside of the ready function so let's delete all the extra lines here now and next we'll want to create a function that will keep updating as the game goes and since you may eventually add some physics movement to this let's do it in physics process delta and since generally you're going to want to calculate the movements of your kinematic body 2d here let's do physics underscore p and then you'll see physics process delta pop up so hit enter in order to get that so this is one of the two functions that will keep running as the game runs the other is is underscore process the difference is that physics process tries to update a set number of frames every second and then underscore process pretty much runs as often as it can so whenever you're doing physics stuff like movement and collisions it's recommended that you do it under physics process so next what we can do is figure out if the player has pressed the move right or move left action so in that case we would be looking at input dot get action strength so action strength would mean that if you were using something like a joystick you might actually be pushing the joystick to the right less than a 1.0 or full value so it'll be somewhere between zero and the full value of one in the case of a keyboard though i believe it would just always be one so it's so generally for player movement you would be controlling the movement based on an axis input so that would be the x-axis for running left and right on the screen and you can get the value for that by doing var axis x equals input dot get action strength. And the reason there's a strength is because if you were using something like a joystick, you might not be pressing the joystick all the way to the right to give it a full action strength of 1.0, but it might be somewhere between 0 and 1. And so we want ui dot right, which is a default built in action to Godot. Which, by the way, if you want to customize these actions, you go up to Project, Project Settings, Input Map, and you can see all of the actions here. So you can see UI right can be controlled with the right arrow on the keyboard, but also D-pad right if you have a actual controller connected. And you can add additional key binding events with this plus sign over here. So we want input dot get action strength minus input dot get action strength uh, UI left. So what this would mean is that if you're pressing the right arrow at the same time that you're pressing the left arrow, they would kind of cancel each other out and you'd end up with an axis X value of zero. So the character wouldn't end up moving if you used this value to determine that movement. So just for now, though, just to show animations changing, let's use that axis X value to determine the animation. So if the axis X is not equal to zero, then that means that you're trying to move the character. So we can take the animated sprite and set the animation on it dot animation is equal to the name of the animation we wanted to set it to so if we click back on the animated sprite we can see our animation names here so they need to be put in quotations in the exact same format so if we go back over to f3 it's not equal to zero so we want it to be in the run state and else we'll set the animated sprite dot animation equal to idle so let's hit enter there so let's go ahead and save that and we can try it out inside of the game. Um, let's hit F1 and I'm going to change the default animation to be idle. Now before we actually run the scene, let's set up the project so that we can see it better. So I'll go to project, project settings and general. I'll go to display window down here. You can also search for that. And we're going to change the width of the screen to 320, the height to 180, the test width to... 1028 by 720 so this will be the size that it displays when we hit play but this will be the actual setup size for the base screen so it'll just scale up to this if we go down here to stretch mode and we say 2d with keep so make sure you have settings similar to that so that the display is more appropriate for pixel art and then we also need to come up here to the top where it says application run and choose a main starting scene for the project so if you want you can just leave it as player.tscn or you can create another scene and then create a copy of the player into that scene so that you can run it but let's just use the player.tscn for a second now generally you would want to keep your player centered but if it runs this scene it's not going to really be displaying in the center very well so for now i'll just move this over to the center of our window and let's go ahead and hit play so when we hit play 
Our character's in the center of the screen, the idle is playing, but if we want to make it run, we can hit left or right on the keyboard. So I hit right arrow and it switches to the run animation. We let go and it goes back to idle. And also if we hit left arrow, then it's going to be running, but it's not going to be running to the left. So one more thing we could fix is setting in the script a way for this horizontal X to toggle so that it can switch directions left and right. So back in the script, let's do that real quick. So instead of saying does not equal zero, let's say is greater than zero, which will mean running to the right. And so to modify this, let's make sure that the animated sprite has its flip H off. So flip H uh, underscore H actually. And we want to set that to false. But if the axis X is less than zero, then we're trying to face the left direction. So animated sprite dot animation equals run but the animated sprite dot flip h is going to be equal to true okay and uh, also make sure that this is a uh, else if not just a if so that this will have to be false before it goes to this and then finally this will be the third option if those first two conditions aren't met so let's go ahead and hit play and if we hit left arrow we should have it running to the left if we hit right arrow it should run to the right and if we let go for idle it should idle in whichever direction it was pointing when it was running so if we run left it'll idle left when we let go so this kind of simple scripting your animations to change works pretty well if you have a very simple setup so for instance if you wanted to randomly have a character blink every 20 seconds scripting that with a random number generator would work pretty decently but if you're going to have a character with many different animations moving around the map all the time, then using a blend tree to control your animations may end up being the better option. So in another video, I'm going to get into that and cover how to set up and use blend trees for your characters inside of Godot. But for now, that's going to be it for this quick introduction to setting up animations inside of Godot. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.